I worked hard for that D. That was my D. I deserved that D. She like, I want that D too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Shit, I need uh, Hey, I work hard for that yeah. D too. <laughs> I, I love how she's smirking like, yeah. you don't know what he's saying right yeah, now. Like, he really is stupid. Oh, he's adorable. <laughs> he's so cute. Shit, I'll earn that D for you. <laughs> Everyone, we're about to talk about a horror sci-fi comedy cult classic. And if you're here for that, then chances are you just love horror in general. And if that is the case, then I have something for you. And that is Shudder.com. S-H-U-D-D-E-R.com. Now, you probably heard me talk about Shudder a lot. And there's a reason why I do that. There's a reason why Shudder wants me to talk about them a lot. And that is because I am a genuinely satisfied customer and a fan of of the platform. I love horror, and the only thing I can complain about with Shudder is that it just might be too much stuff here. And when has that ever been a bad thing? Look at this. They got all these categories, supernatural, killers, creature features, psychological thrillers, exclusives and originals. If you love your horror that much, and you probably love horror from around the world, they have international documentary, learn something about the genre. And just in case you want a little variety outside of horror, they got you there too. Look at this. Comedies. That's right. You can even laugh with your horror. Crime and mystery. They even have sci-fi. Now, you're looking at me right now and saying, you know what? I still don't believe you, Corey. You're just trying to make a sell. Name one thing that you watch on Shudder. And I got you. I told you, Creep Show is one of my favorite movies. And now it is one of my favorite shows here on Shutter. They even have their exclusives. They're on season three with this right here. But there's something else that I want to check out right now. I haven't seen it yet, but this is a, this is one of the reasons why I'm glad that I have Shutter because of things like this that get me excited. I love horror so much that I want to learn about the genre more, and they have a documentary series called Behind the Monsters. Try to understand the full story because we're a different kind of monster. With no money. It was the first serial killer they had to create. Ah, loving what you see? Want more of it? Well, then you know what you gotta do. You gotta get shuttered. Well, Corey, I would, but that's just a, that's a lot of content, man. And time's a little bit hard. I don't know if I can afford all that. Yes, you can. When you stop cutting yourself short like that, hey, listen, the entertainment and the value that you get from Shutter, it's not cheap, but the price is $5.99 per month and $56.99 per year. And you're not getting away from this because Shudder is going to stalk you and not let you get away like the relentless killer you see in some of these horror movies. Why? Because you can get Shudder on all your favorite devices. I'm looking at them right here. You ain't going nowhere. iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, Xbox One, Amazon Fire TV, Google Chromecast, Roku, Android devices. Stop running. Stop trying to hide. You're not getting away from this and you won't want to once I tell you what I can do for you right here. I'm going to get you Shudder. 30 days for free. That's right, uh-huh, got your attention now. You stop running, you're coming back. You heard me correct. Shudder, 30 days for free. That's S-H-U-D-D-E-R.com. Go there and type in the promo code, Double Toasted, that's D-O-U-B-L-E-T-O-A-S-T-E-D, and you'll get Shudder 30 days for free. I want to thank Shudder for sponsoring this video that we're about to show you, and also, I want to thank all of you out there for your support. Thank you. So, back in 1998, they had two very big names collaborating on one. What they figured would be one huge motion picture. Wonder Kid, Robert Rodriguez, legendary filmmaker, shocked the world, 23-year-old guy who made a movie for $900. <laughs> Was it nine hundred? No, it was nine thousand. But okay. I, I like to, <laughs> sure, I like sure. to change the tail around. Take, you know? yeah. take it no, rid of, no, get rid of that zero. Go with the legend. Nine dollars, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Made a full movie, and thus his career began. The great El Mariachi is what mm -hmm. did that, and Kevin Williamson, screenwriter that gave us. Did I say screenwriter? Well, probably because I have Scream on the mind. Mm -hmm. Screenwriter that gave us Scream, and Dawson's Creek, and mm -hmm. Dawson's Creek. Mm -hmm. He was set to make another big team pick right here with this feature and as i said this was set to be huge it had a huge cast too people yeah people they, people they said forget what it's about the, the names alone 
sell this motion picture, which is the faculty. The students at Harrington High have always suspected their teachers were from another planet. Critics are calling it hip and scary. A thrilling ride from beginning to end. Those ain't putting none of those critics' names no, up. No, 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 who they are. <laughs> I like they Unknown. Did you call that hip and scary? <laughs> Not me, man. No, man. No, and they can't talk to him. I ain't <laughs> saying They didn't even go deep with it. I thought the, when he went with that deep ass voice, yeah. critics say scary. Hip. I think that's it. <laughs> so that's all they got so to say? Wait, got. you mean the one critic who was in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> that's me. The sad reality is that the movie didn't actually do that well when it came out. Now, if you were in Austin at the time, <laughs> critics were obligated. They had to. It was no choice. If you were, if you were, if you were in Austin, which is where Robert Rodriguez is from, or at least it's where he made his career. He went to Austin Tech, you know, to the University of Texas. Yeah, with you. <laughs> nah, nah, that's another story for another time. <laughs> I'm, not getting, I'm not getting into that. But, you know, if you were in Austin, Texas at the time, during this climate when Austin was supposed to be the Hollywood of the South, mm. before politics came in and ruined all of that, then you were obligated to give this movie a glowing review. Uh, it even had cameos by big Austin names such as, uh, you'll see it right here, such as Harry Knowles. But you can't miss him. Yeah, it's, it's very big, very big yeah, name. That's a big Austin name right there. <laughs> It'd be, you know what would be funny if everybody was actually moving in real time and he's just so big, he's just moving in slow motion. <laughs> he's in slow motion. <laughs> and that is, back here, that is Lewis Black, which he was the head of the very popular publication here called the Austin Chronicle. I don't know if he's still over it or not. I'm I don't sure. think so. I don't think so. But yeah, man. So here in Love Austin, Texas, you had no choice but to give movies like The Faculty a glowing review. But most critics out there who weren't in Austin, Texas, they were like, eh, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, hey, it's fine. It's it's hip. <laughs> it's, it's 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 scary. It's, All right, sure. it's fine for it's something fine. that heavily borrows from much better movies. Mm, yes. Oh yes, very much so. Yeah, critics weren't going crazy over this like they predicted. Even today, on Rotten Tomatoes, the movie just has a mere fifty-five percent on the old tomato meter right there. And at the box office, it did even worse. You know, even after putting out a poster that was supposed to make people think this was a combination of Scream and Independence Day. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> sci-fi Scream. A sci-fi Scream. Guys. You know, even after the marketing that put that out there, with some of the very popular names in the movie, yeah. I mean, these were some very young people who were up-and-comers at the time. They were even, they even had a marketing campaign for this movie that was uh, involved with a clothing brand that was very popular with people at the time. That was a big status symbol. Tommy Hilfiger. Two trap, two dark. Three, David, take three. No, get that off. It's wrong. No time. Cut. No break. Take 22. What do you want me to do? Change. Maybe this commercial just annoyed the f out of people. Yeah. Maybe that's, maybe, wow, maybe that's why the movie didn't go Man. do do, didn't that, do too well. That is one annoying commercial. I never saw it before. Yeah. Shit, maybe some people thought that was the movie. <laughs> One, two, three, David, take 40. No, hell no. I ain't watching that. I don't want to have these people just screaming at each other. Yeah. Also, it didn't help that the movie was released you know, because uh, it opened up at number five at the box office, mm -hmm. making people think that, you know, maybe not the wisest business move to release a teen horror sci-fi flick on Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. This was released on December 25th of 1998. Well, they famously released Scream around the same time within the month of December. They probably just thought they would have the same success. This is Dimensions, which is the same studio that released the first Okay, screen. then it was the commercial. <laughs> 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 that was it. Scream didn't have yeah, anything yeah, like that. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't, don't blame Christmas. That's a really bad commercial. Yeah, yeah come on now. <laughs> yes. It was the commercial that ruined it. I ain't going to see that shit. You want to take and see those bratty teenagers? No, I don't think so. Oh, but the movie does have a cult following yeah. out there mm -hmm. after several years. Almost, I would say several years, but you know, soon after the movie came out. There's a cult following of people who like to say, you know, you just don't get it, man. 
<laughs> you're not hip. <laughs> you not don't scary. Wanna, you're not scary. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. You don't know good cinema when you see it. Uh, and if you're one of those people, well, shit, I got to tell you, I agree. I don't think everybody else agrees with me in this room. But I'm one of those people that I don't remember the movie. This is my second time seeing it. Probably I saw it sometimes on TV, which I think it'll yeah. be a great discussion if we all don't agree mm-hmm. on where this is. But I am one of those people where after seeing it again, I'm I, like the last time I remember seeing this, it was back in 1998 in the theater. If even then, because I don't know, did they give us? I don't even remember. No, they, no, we did. We, we, so, we had a screening for it because okay. that was the last time I saw it. Okay. Because I remember seeing it. So 1998 was probably the last time I saw this, unless I saw it on TV and don't remember. Now, I understand there's different opinions on this, obviously, between critics who didn't feel crazy about it, the audiences that don't like it, and then the cult following that loves the movie. But I, I, you know, I, I understand all the different opinions about this. I do, and I respect it all. What I don't get are the harshest criticisms of this, where it says it rips off films that do it better. Now, I agree that, yes, the influences that this movie took its influences from, uh, those films are far superior. Yes. Yeah, you know, by, by, by a long shot. I even think the filmmakers would tell you, like, yeah, fuck yeah. You know, we, that's, why we, that's why we ripped them off because they're better than we are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. I would say this, though, but as far as being just a complete rip, Nah, I don't. I, I I don't think so. But I'd be happy to hear what everybody else has to say about that. In my opinion, I don't think that they completely rip things off. Because now, if the movie was repeating, just straight up repeating the things that it took its inspiration from, or downright stole from, you know, I ain't, I ain't stupid. You know, then that would be one thing. But it is using it to say something. You know, it's uh, you know, it's it's doing something a slightly different. It is making a commentary on things. If this was something where it just you know you had that whole thing of people lying, talking about, nah, man, it's homage. Get the f- out of here with that. You know, I I know the difference between homage and just ripping something off. Homage is just a, it's just a, it's it's just another way. It's just a, it's just a nice way. Yeah. Kind of of saying I rip something off. Yeah, sure. It I think it depends, at least for me, it depends on how much you do it. Because mm-hmm. at first it can be yeah. a reference or in the spirit of or a wink and a nod to something else. And that's an homage. But where your plot points are the same or your <laughs> actors are going through the same motions that the actors from a original movie did. And it goes on for a bit. I'm like, you've crossed over into just rip off. Scene by scene, actually. Saying almost kind of the same yeah. dialogue as other past films. And yes. just because you say like, oh, it's like that other movie. It's like, yeah, that don't get you off. That's not yeah. a free pass. And I see people doing that. I, you know, I, or I see people seeing what you're saying. Yeah. And I don't, you know, and I, and I get it. I, I, I saw something else with that. I did see where it was taking those movies and doing kind of scene for scene with them. Uh, but I think, you know, the writer here, Kevin Williamson, I do think that he was doing, he's not doing anything that's too different from the other movie that everybody loves. Someone is playing a deadly game. One too many scary movies. Of course, that is Scream, and he used teenagers and teenage actors and characters, well, they're definitely not teenage actors, but he used teenage <laughs> characters to go in and comment on the tropes of horror. Uh, here, I think Scream did it, of course, much better. Yes. But I do think he's doing something similar where he's he's using horror and sci-fi tropes uh, and scenes that he, all right, flat out stole from his influences. It's Invasion of the Body Snatchers and The Thing yes. meets The Breakfast Club. Yep. And there's a few other things in there if you want to put it in there. Stepford Wives is one. Stepford oh, Wives is one. Yeah. yeah. You know, he's using the sci-fi and horror trope with these influences that he has to say something about another set of tropes, which is high school teens in movies and teenage isolation in general. You know, and I, I, you know what, and I will tell you something with this movie because now we're about to jump into the discussion here. I actually praise the movie, first of all, for casting actors that look like teenagers. 
<laughs> not 30 year olds, not, t- not, not people that look like they should be working in the high school as teachers, but these people actually look like teenagers to me. I'll give you that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Elijah Wood looks so young. Yeah. And he is. I don't even think he was, I don't even, I don't even know if he was 20 yet. Yeah, I mean, he looks like, you sure you aren't in middle school? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he looks like that now, though. <laughs> yeah. I gotta admit that. Uh, <laughs> you know, that was perfect casting for Elijah Wood. Yeah. Who is who is playing Peter Parker Yo, in he's, this he's, movie. He's so Peter Parker in this movie. <laughs> it's like, I, I imagine Ken Williamson and Robert Rodriguez like, okay, we want Peter Parker, but we don't have to have any spider powers. Yeah. He'll yeah, be our yeah. main character in the film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of these other actors, they were in their early 20s when yes. they did this, mm-hmm. but they looked like teenagers. Sure. And I was like, all right, well, man. There was another movie that we did for a retro review, which is Starship Troopers, where they didn't even try. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, 40 years old no, in that, that was, movie. That was part of the humor, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was yeah. Paul Verhoeven. He couldn't make it happen with younger actors. Yeah. Oh, he just said, you know what? Yeah, I'll, he's like, I can't have sex scenes with younger actors. So yeah. If, if something has to go, because I'm having my sex scenes. In my <laughs> yeah. Shit, all these people going to be titties and penises in the same room <laughs> taking a shower. <laughs> no, it's a very breakfast club type thing they have going on with the characters mm-hmm. that they have in here. Um, like Elijah Wood is what? The Casey. nerd. Yeah, Casey. 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 Casey, crime photographer. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Who is the, the, the bullet wimp at the school? <laughs> God damn. They didn't even show you who did that. No, that's what's funny about this. Is he gets bullied so much that random body parts just come out and knock his ass out. Always him in the nose. I don't even think that arm had a body. <laughs> that arm got top billing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Casey getting his ass beat. And it happens so often that mm-hmm. everybody just walks on by. Yeah, okay. oh. yeah, everybody's like, oh, that's just Casey. Yeah, we all that's just, hey, That's, that's just, how you know school started. Yep. That's just a Wednesday morning for Casey. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> you just see what happens on Thursdays. <laughs> then there's, you got just again like the Breakfast Club. You got the, the 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 goth emo girl Stokely. Crash and burn, Casey. You know he wants to say something, but he's gonna get his ass beat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she beat his ass. He yeah. wants to say. Bitch, <laughs> but, but yeah, her coming on, I was like, "Wow, could you be more Ally Sheedy?" <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you got a uh, uh, Delilah, appropriate name for the. The the, the uh, shallow mean girl at the school. Okay, no hairspray, no teasing, just elegant. And this is when I like Mary Beth, the new possibly virgin student at the school. Thank you. I'm Mary Beth Louise Hutchinson. I really love what you've done with your nose ring. It really brings out the color in your eyes. Yeah, that girl's dead. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they got her quick, man. Yeah, that girl, <laughs> those body snatchers got her. <laughs> that, girl, that girl overdosed or something, yeah, right? <laughs> like when she walked away, that girl just slid. <laughs> Put a big blood spot yeah, on yeah. the back of the wall. <laughs> that bitch is she's yeah, gone. Yeah. <laughs> you got uh, Zeke Josh Hartnett, who is the resident drug dealer at the school. What I like about Zeke is that it's just not illegal drugs. My man is a he's a he's a he's a pharmacy on wheels. Like if you take. You can't take a shit. Go see Zeke. He's got laxatives for you. Substances. Now you want to tell me about it or take it up with Principal Drake? You're too tense, Miss Burke. Blockage caused by dietary stress. Chocolate flavored laxatives. Zeke lax. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way she's thinking. You know, I haven't been able to take a shit lately. Yeah, right. He- you know, Zeke, I, I'm the authority figure here. It's, it's important <laughs> that I, I tell you this and yeah. let the rest of the audience know. Yeah, and Zeke is like, well, I'm the authority on taking a shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, his trunk is just a magic bag of tricks. It pretty much <laughs> is, yeah. <laughs> Christ. I mean, how many people at this, at this school can't shit and they come and talk to Zeke? <laughs> Zeke, yeah, you got them laxatives, this man? Always. You know, all these types eventually, as you might have guessed, they end up becoming something else. But... What I thought was the most interesting character was uh, was was Stan. Yeah, you know Stan. Stan is the uh, dumb jock who wants a brain. You know he. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to see the yeah, wizard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he wants a brain in order to get that brain. He's got a he, yeah. He's a goddamn scarecrow. Of the book. <laughs> he wants a brain and in order to get that brain. He feels like well, he has to quit the football team. They're just holding him back. That shit weakens leg meat. And that is Stan right there, as you say, they gave him his name. And the, 
reason why he wants to is because, you know, just like any jock at school, he's always been given a pass. Yeah. You know, everybody kisses his ass. He feels like, you know what, I'm one of the few guys that recognizes that I'm not getting by because of my character or my smarts. I'm just a dumb dude throwing a ball, and as long as I'm doing well for this school, they're going to keep passing me. At least he's smart enough to realize, hey, you know what, even if I make a D, I earned that D. That shouldn't be changed to an A. That was a hard-earned D. I made a D on a biology test right after, and uh, Mr. Furlong changed it to an A. I worked hard for that D. That was my D. I deserved that D. She like, I want that D too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Shit, I need to, hey, I work hard for that D too. <laughs> I, I, love, I love how she's smirking like, yeah. he don't know what he's saying right yeah, now. <laughs> like, he really is stupid. No, he's adorable. <laughs> he's so cute. Shit, I'll earn that D for you. <laughs> you know, I can, uh, and the thing is, I can see why he wants off the football team because Ooh. goddamn Robert Patrick with his crazy ass. Yeah. Some <laughs> very 90s casting, by the way. Uh, oh, yeah. Robert Patrick, of course, of the term. Terminator fame. T-1000. T-1000. That's, why they, that's why they got him, because he's playing the T-1000 again. He's pretty again. much a crazy-ass Terminator on this field. God damn it! Get off the fucking field, you lip back bogus! You gonna rejoin the living tomorrow, Stan? You got to feel the pressure closing in on you, then you get better the rock! you like, yeah, if I hadn't seen Terminator, <laughs> I'd say something right now. <laughs> He's the same character on Peacemaker. He is, yeah. <laughs> the early years. <laughs> yep. <laughs> just, just more overt, overtly yeah. racist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just bitter, man. I mean, the team's doing all right. He just got a chip on his shoulder. Anybody that talked to him, like, what the f*** you want? This better be important, or somebody's going to be doing laps until sunrise. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Everything is a challenge with this dude, man. Yeah, what the f*** you want? He's so crazy and so mean. He made a jock want to go read books. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's impressive. <laughs> because I remember when I started watching the movie, and I'm going to get to to you to why I think that this is really actually a smart movie, even if people, you know, even people disagree. And I hope, like, we do have a good discussion about what we disagree flip on. the camera on me when you say when people disagree. <laughs> now he flipped it to me, too. <laughs> well, I did give it to you first. So. <laughs> <laughs> if some people disagree, <laughs> I don't know who. <laughs> But we'll find out. <laughs> but, nah, man, you know, because even when I started watching this, I thought that early on, early on, I thought like, uh, well, first of all, I thought as the movie went on, they started doing clever things, such as I thought that that was really cool that they took the dumb jock yeah. and played him against type. Sure. I said, you know, that's clever writing right there. We got that out the way early, you know, because all these other characters pretty much are sticking to their types until later on in the film. I like they play with the jock because the jock is the most stereotyped person probably besides the, the, the kid that's getting bullied. But, and, you know, when the movie started, I have to admit, I said, I don't know. Wow, I don't know. this is not going to be as good as I thought it was. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going to like this. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a, early on in the movie, there's, there's just some... I would say, if not bad editing, just very choppy editing. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, it's funny because Robert Rodriguez, one of the things that he's known for, he's known for being a very hands-on filmmaker, not only directing, but he loves to edit his movies too. Mm -hmm. And I will give him this. He does some creative editing, if not just a little over the top sometimes. Casey, you understand? Peter. <laughs> I gotta lay off that shit. You got a damn symphony. Okay, huh? What? <laughs> <laughs> you know, a little dramatic. But I thought it was kind of cool. You know, it's, they're supposed to be making this kind of intentionally over the top intense like that. Comedic. You Com you comedic imagine. even, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, that was cool. But there was something that happened early on in the movie where I thought like, yes. damn. Okay, you're thinking about the same thing mm -hmm. because there was something like, I saw, and that shit was just karate chopping, man. He like he, that motherfucker took a machete to the film at this point because I couldn't tell. A machete. <laughs> yeah, my, a machete. <laughs> yeah, Danny Trejo came in and started editing the movie, man. <laughs> because there was a point where I was like, I can kind of tell what was happening, but no. it still looks. No, it's bad. I know. I know what scene you're talking about. It's right at the beginning. <laughs> Yeah, I was thrown by that too. I was like, 
How did she that quick? He was like right at her heel. She somehow got out the door, no. spun around, and got it locked again yeah, on thought, one quick motion. I, I thought she teleported through the shit. Right. So I couldn't tell. I, I, now, if you go through it, he sped frame up the footage. Frame, he sped up the footage here. That's what he did. Well, if you, yeah, because if you go through it frame by frame, you can actually see her. You can actually see her leaving, but it's so. It's so fast and so choppy that it's, it, for that moment, it's hard to tell what is happening. I remember watching it because I haven't seen this movie in years. I was like, that was odd. So yeah, you know, weird. so you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I, did. I, I thought I it was just me the, the no. whole time. I was like, Hi. no. Okay, I, yeah. I guess I maybe maybe I looked away for a second. That was the first like really weird scene. Yeah. I was like, Man, I, like I said, I don't understand. I can't figure out what the f- going on. Continuity error number one. <laughs> Especially when you have Robert Patrick doing that Terminator run. Mm-hmm. <laughs> was right up on her man yeah he would have now it. i don't i know space when it comes to editing sometimes it doesn't matter you just have to accept it but i don't know how she got to that that chain wasn't off the door that yet chain was no. not off the door. <laughs> <Clumped over. laughs> she dived through yeah. This, pull not, me! Uh, pull me through! Pull me through! A <laughs> <laughs> skinny ass is just fucking. Yeah. I'm the least of this shit. Might be hard for some people to get into. I mean, I don't understand why because we watch movies all the time that are a product of their time. Sure. You go to the '60s, you go to the '70s, you go sure. to the '50s, or whatnot. You know, it doesn't bother me that a movie is a product of its time. Just be, you know, warned that this is very much a '90s film. It's Nev Campbell. And Jennifer Love Hewitt, right? Yep. And they're naked? Full frontal. <laughs> Boy, that can't wait to go home and jack off. That's funny. I was like, there is no such movie. <laughs> yeah. There's, there, there's no such movie with both of them naked. <laughs> these two, yeah, they gonna go jack off in the car together. Right? <laughs> holding the boxes. They gonna be watching anything. You know, that is... You know, these kids now with the, who grew up with the internet are like, I don't understand what's happening right yeah, now. Here's well, that is the thing. Are you be surprised at how some kids would know? I mean, again, nostalgia being what it is, especially with Scream making a comeback now and everything. Sure. You'd be surprised. But I will say, you don't get more 90s than two dudes getting ready to go jack off to a naked Nev Campbell and Jennifer Love Hewitt on VHS. Yeah. No, that's what I meant by that. Mm-hmm. That a, a kid now wouldn't understand having to buy a tape to see porno when it's readily available sure. at your computer or your phone. Yeah, oh, born sure. after 2000 oh, at this yeah. point, they wouldn't know. I'm sure Pop has told you a few times that he had to go get his porno at the <laughs> back closet of the video <laughs> store. Video shop, yeah. 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 Mm. Oh, what bothers a lot of people, not exactly me. I mean, it did at one time, because I remember looking at this at the time and thinking, man, they really did kind of just rip these scenes off. But, you know, after watching this, I kind of feel differently. But I know a lot of people are, they just don't like the fact that this took so generously <laughs> from from uh, from the thing. Yes. And I say generously uh, in a sarcastic kind of way. No, they, they, pretty, no, they, went, they went to the fucking buffet and took scoops of this shit. <laughs> They're the fools that get kicked out of the all-you-can-eat buffet. God damn, I say take that much thing. Hey, you guys brought Ziploc bags in here. You can't yeah. do that. Yeah. <laughs> and back in the day, no one loved the thing. True. It was a box office failure True. and a critical failure. But today it's brilliant. And one of the things that people love the movie for it is the practical effects that and those a lot of those scenes are classics man Mm -hmm. you can't just step in here and decide to just take that shit and Uh say you know what i'm gonna do that too because it's not that it's so much history behind it so much fanfare behind it it's not that easy so if you decide to take like one of the most popular effects from this film like the spider head scene Mm -hmm. You gotta be fucking kidding. (laughs) You know, you can even tell that that's a puppet, but there's something really cool about. There uh, is, because that's. About latex and and tangible materials. That scene borders on being silly. Mm -hmm. It could have wrecked the whole movie. And when it first starts to happen, there's that feeling of like, no, don't do this, because it's it's been too good. Don't ruin this movie. And then somehow they pull it out, and it, yeah, it looks good. You buy it, you buy into it. Yeah. and you can't recreate that and half step with some CGI, especially. No, some you can't. Really well, hold bad. on, yeah, I mean, you can't. Yeah, you can't come in and just. Yeah, people, there's something about practical effects that's cool. And if you play, you're exactly right. If you play it right, 
you know what you're doing. You're a brilliant director. Then you then you know how to make it work. And the actors can sell it too. And the actors yeah. and they can see it. They yeah. actually yeah. see that's it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 So you just can't come in with any kind of just CG effects and say, look, we paying homage. No, you ain't. I know there's something there. They, yeah, told, something. Me. they told me something. There's a tennis ball. They, oh, it's moving again. Point at the ground. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> now, Oof. honestly, they're playing it up for comedy yes, too. Sure, but still, you can't be talking about. Well, you see, what they did was <laughs> they got to <laughs> overexplain it. What, what what they did was a spider head. See, we 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 got an octo head. Yeah, <laughs> it, ain't, head. it ain't the same. Just squid. Yeah, it ain't the same thing. Nah, it, nah, we nah, know what you're doing. This was dun 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 yeah. dun dun, <laughs> and mine was dun 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 dun. dun. Yeah. <laughs> Out of here, you can't, you can't pull it. Look at this shit. I'm saying it's, yeah, it's fluid. Even though those effects have dated real oh, bad. Yeah, it's ninety CGI, man. Yeah, you know, you just can't pull that kind of shit right there, man. Yeah. Uh, the same thing that they did. Now, I do. Some people say it's, a, it's the same thing with another thing scene, the thing scene yes. in the movie, and that is the scene where they're testing everybody. If you've seen the thing, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't. So in the thing, there's this alien that can mimic people, mm -hmm. clothing and everything. And so in this, this, this Arctic station, people, they don't know who is the actual alien or it might be several people. Mm -hmm. There's a brilliant scene in that movie where Kurt Russell has to, because even the blood can be its own separate be, organism. organism. Mm -hmm. So he has to test everything. So he's testing everybody's blood and it's a brilliant scene. You were the only one that could have got to that blood. Will do you last? <laughs> I think they Didn't expect that man, one. I think they, yeah. I think they shut, set that shit up to scare Kurt Russell. <laughs> God damn it, John! Yeah. Again. <laughs> so for those who don't know, I didn't even tell you about the faculty. The faculty is about a high school that is being taken over by an alien that a, a parasite that can get into anybody and take over their minds. Sort of like another movie you might recognize <laughs> about an alien invasion where yes. people are taken over by the this species. The snatching variety. Of the snatching think? variety. <laughs> it's called the faculty because the teachers are the ones to get affected first. Of course. Then it goes, it trickles down to the students because you know the teachers are the authority figures. They can tell students to meet me at the office and shove an alien down your nose or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, if soon comes down to the students. And so this group of students that we have here, the ones we met before, they don't trust each other. Paranoia has kicked in. Uh, I thought it was cool what they did with their own scene right here. The way they did it is your boy Zeke who makes a homemade drug with caffeine pills and whoever, <laughs> talcum powder, whoever knows what else yeah. he got in there. <laughs> Cigarette ash. Mostly caffeine. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, having people snort. He saw Saved by the Bell and said, that's a good idea. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> and I just came out. Damn, this shit really works. Yeah, <laughs> turns out, hey, you know, before it was a legal drug that needs to be taken out of school, now it just might save the human race. It has a negative effect on these aliens. They Dries them it. out. Dries them out, and they love water. Something about movies where aliens just love water. <laughs> they always come here. Either they love water or they, hate, or they water. hate water. They yeah. still come here no matter what. <laughs> they still come here no matter what. But Zeke takes them back to the home lab, has to test everybody with this drug. Now, what they, I think they did some things here that were pretty cool. Um, you know, if, if you watch it just on face value, very much like the John Carpenter thing testing scene. We know this out some, right? Oh, come on, man. If you're not an alien, you got nothing to worry about. The famous last words, of course. Now, what I thought was good with this is that Kevin Williamson did his own thing with it where he said, all right, you know, everybody's going to know it's a thing. I'm just doing, some, you know, I'm doing my own thing, my own take on it. But I think what he did was he was able to create suspense his own way by having the, these characters are high now. They're on this drug. And the more these characters get high, the more they're laughing the more the I think the, the 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 tenseness is amped up. I think it's creating this atmosphere of like not only is everybody worried about who's the alien right here, but now I got this fool over here giggling. You know, making me <laughs> Elijah Wood. Elijah is, Wood's uh, giggling, over here, giggling his ass giggling off. This, this is a over here, giggling his ass off. <laughs> and it's just making the, it's just making everybody more tense. It's a funny scene, but I think it's also a good way of making his scene more suspenseful. <laughs> 
you're taking it. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. No wonder, like, no, no wonder people will elbow your ass in the yeah, face yeah. every day. It's Shit. like, oh, kid, you've never been high before, yeah. have you? <laughs> now what the hell's wrong with you? It's the over exaggeration of it, like those sound effects and the score and and the giggling. I think it's um, it comes off too goofy. Maybe that's the point. They want to make it more comedic. But the end result of this scene is the thing that doesn't sell it for me. Whereas in the thing, it has an end result. And it's like, oh my god, it's horrifying. Sure. The practical effects they have a, an effect here, but it's so goofy and and it has not aged well. That yeah, I, I didn't like it. Robert Rodriguez has a tendency to. You know, with with his own work, he has a tendency to be, he's campy. Yes. yes. You know, he's yes, very, he he's very campy. Uh, and this, this movie's campy too. Don't, mm-hmm. not, don't, don't get me wrong. This movie's, this movie is, is, is all, you know, all over the place with his campiness. Uh, and some of it works, some of it doesn't. Like some of it is, is, some of it is too over the top. Like the whole scene where they're on the football field, <laughs> when Harrington, the, the name of the town here is Harrington, I believe. Yeah. And they, uh, they're playing the opposing team on Friday night. And, of course, the football team by this point is taken over by this alien parasite. And now they want to spread it to another town. So they start putting the parasite in other people's, uh, <laughs> in other people's ears and noses. But they do it on the field. And it's just it's a silly-ass scene, man. <laughs> Put, he putting them putting them usher bucks in his ear. <laughs> <laughs> you can spend this at La, in Las Vegas at my show. <laughs> hey usher, you suck. <laughs> and I love. <laughs> yeah, give one to Jason Derulo. He'll yeah, love yeah. him. <laughs> Tell him I said hi. <laughs> I love how even though they lay out the entire team, no one's like, "That's kind of odd that they keep you know just killing the entire team and just taking them off the field." Just like, take them, exactly. Yeah, now like, that hmm. I was like, no, you, none of y'all see that shit. <laughs> this nigga over somebody's head. <laughs> it was a shrimp. <laughs> With a shrimp. Yeah. Come on. Huh? Shrimp. <laughs> I got shrimp. <laughs> Robert Patrick, man, although he's having fun in yes. this movie, he he is way overacting and camping it up and uh, ca- camping it up in this scene right here. Shit, he's on some of that that that, that Zeke dust, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, yeah, forget the alien. Yeah, shit, forget the man. All that Zeke, dude. he's on the caffeine pills. <laughs> That's Robert Rodriguez probably in some of his other movies where it's very campy. But I do think that he's right. He, he's directing something from somebody else's script. Yeah, and a lot yes. of times when he's writing his own stuff. That stuff goes to a camp level of cartoonishness. Yep. You know, and what? I'm not even saying that's bad. Some people like those things, uh, but this, this right here, I felt like this was a different kind of Robert Rodriguez that I saw. It was it as was. campy as it is. It wasn't as cartoonishly over the top as those exactly. other movies. Exactly. And look, and looking at this scene right here, I was like, you know what? I believe that this this goes to show me the the directing talent of Robert Rodriguez when he's not, you know being cartoonish in his other movies because to me this did this this scene genuinely had tenseness for me it was suspenseful and i i, I ain't never felt as as suspenseful or it held in suspense in a, in a robert rodriguez movie as i did in this scene right here mm-hmm. if nothing else i haven't seen a robert rodriguez be this way for a long time maybe in battle angel Lita. well it, yeah. i remember at the time 98 seeing this uh like with, with El Mariachi, I loved that just as much as everybody else yeah. did. Mm-hmm. But all his movies that came after that, mm-hmm. I just hated them all. See? And I was just like, man, just don't give this guy money. He can work fine when he's got when he's Nothing. tight resources. Yeah. Um, but this was the first movie he has since Mariachi, uh, El Mariachi, that I liked. And, and it and it's just like, okay, it's working with a different script. It's not over the top in that same way, like you said, cartoonish. In the movie, they reference uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. They even say that. You know, Invasion of the Body Snatchers is, uh, that's a movie where uh, it might have, I mean, I'm sorry, that's a book and a movie where it it might have happened in real life. You know, maybe this, maybe this is not stupid, I'm going to tell you that. It, it, it is weird, because they reference, like, Spielberg and Lucas, maybe they were visited by aliens and they're warning us. What the hell are you talking about? And again, you know, they're being, like, they're being silly I, I, here. I, I, yeah. I've, I've been trying with y'all. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you another thing, before I even get into that aspect, because that's, a, that's one of the things that I really like about with, why, how, or how they're using their influences here. Because, again, there's a lot of scenes here where Robert Rodriguez is his direction, I think, is great. 
Uh, and yeah, I mean, if you want to make some logic out of it, yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> you know, I, 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 get, I hear what you're saying. I'm not, I'm not saying that you guys are, are crazy for mentioning these things. Yeah. But I just think his direction is really cool. Um, I think, again, there are moments here where it really pulled me in because I was actually nervous for these characters at some point, even with this being funny. That whole scene where <laughs> Josh Hartnett kicks out uh, Elijah Wood saying, you know, we, I want to use you as the bait, and he put his little ass out there, yeah. and the whole football team, which is infested with aliens, start chasing him. You know, I will tell you, too, that Robert Rodriguez, if you want to do a horror movie and pull back on the camp a little bit, I think that he would do great at that, man. I don't think that's possible. I, You know, you never know. I didn't know. You know, at one time, I didn't even know he would do something like Alita Battle Angel or whatever. But I just look at scenes in here where, man, he, in my opinion, he created some real good mood. He created, a, again, some real tense scenes. Uh, and did a very cool, you know, there were parts in here where there were some really cool horror segments. That part where Elijah Wood goes on the bus, mm-hmm. yeah, and you have uh, Delilah talking to him, and while the whole time she's talking to him, and being creepy while she's doing it, the whole infested football team is outside, just racking on the bus, just punching it, and, and trying to even tip it over at some point. We can help you belong, isn't that what you really want? Please don't do this. <laughs> I haven't been this happy since... When my dad died. You know, I was like, damn, this guy really knows how to create mood, man. Uh, you know, again, I'm not saying that he should not direct what he wants to direct. That's his, that's his deal. He was, has his influences himself. Uh, but I'm just saying, if he ever wanted to like pull back on the cartoonishness and do something where whether it's his work or not, maybe, maybe it would be good if somebody wrote a horror movie and said, hey, Robert, direct this, man. Because, uh, it, you know, and again, it's just me, but I really thought that that was a very cool scene right there. It was really great mood. Where I really come in and see where Kevin Williamson has taken these influences and used it to his own effect to make his own statement here is, is with a movie that we already talked about mm-hmm. and coming back around to it, uh, which is Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Bringing a new dimension in terror to the giant super scope screen. Super scope. Super scope. <laughs> Shit. Super scope. <laughs> super scope. Go, go, go. <laughs> so if you haven't seen this, it's a uh, classic. It's, it is a classic. Now, a lot of people them. today, they probably won't appreciate it. I'm talking about younger people because, you know, this is a black and white movie. The effects, you know, they're very, very, very minimal. For you know, for its time that they they were great mm. by the day standards, you know, y'all gonna be like, oh, this ain't scary. What the hell? Sure. Goddamn big ass cabbages and <laughs> people <laughs> popping out of. You know, this was a this was a this was a commentary on communism. Yeah, red scare and the red scare at the time. Shit. Oh, Ken McCarthy's eyes in this movie are amazing. Yeah. He's like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, you know, that's the biggest thing with a movie like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Like, if you really know what this movie, the, the history of it, you appreciate it for its commentary. Mm-hmm. You appreciate it for say, being, saying something about its time. And I think Kevin Williamson, he does sort of the same thing with the Body Snatchers theme. You know, he, he uses it not to talk about communism or the Red Scare, but he uses it to talk about, you know, to address the issue of teen isolation and being in high school or going through your teenage years and feeling this need to conform, feeling this need to be part of a clique or be popular and how this movie addresses that everybody is under this pressure and everybody wants to be relieved of this pressure. You know, that's the thing about the theme that they use here and I thought was smart yeah. because, you know, the, 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 if you've seen the movie kind of, you know, if you haven't, spoiler here, uh, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Mary Bell, the virgin new girl, she ends up, of course, being the queen alien. And we'll talk about that's that's a problem I have a oh, with that yeah, trope. I'll, t- right. I'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I have a big problem with that trope right there. But I do think it's smart the the way they took that theme of invasion of the body snatchers and used it to address just teenage fears and pressure and and loneliness and isolation. I met you, all of you. Just like me. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's butt ass nigga walking through here. I would. What's that movie? That's why I said there's some other things here. What's that movie with the space vampires? Oh, uh, I know. You, I know. Exactly oh what you're shit! About. I think I know what you're talking about. I know exactly Beach what you're talking about. Force, my, my, life, life, force. Force. life force, life force. I would That's say it. that this movie is even taking uh, a yeah. little bit of life force. Where there, there's a there's a uh, a space zombie chick, a yeah. space vampire chick, and she's she's butt naked walking through mm-hmm. most of that movie, man. And fine as. Oh uh, yeah, no, you can't take your eyes off of it. No, when the movie's done, you're like, so what was it about? Huh? I don't. <laughs> yeah, I, remember and, and it. don't care. Yeah, but I'm gonna go see it again. I had my eyes closed, and my hand on my dick the whole time. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. No, nah, man, this is a. Uh, but if you can <laughs> keep a, keep your eyes off of this girl's body right here and kind of concentrate on what she's saying, she is addressing the whole thing of I came down here to make you guys. That's why I attacked the high school and make you guys feel better, make you feel like. The pressure's off. Make you feel like you don't have to deal with that anymore. You can finally be free and happy. Thanks, pal. You were lost and lonely, just like me. A world without anger, without fear, without attitude. The new girl, she can just fit right in with people who are just like her. You know, that's, uh, again, nothing new, nothing groundbreaking here. But to me, it says that very well aware of what they're doing with these things by taking them and you know taking these uh these influences from other movies it's not just a straight rip off to me i felt completely opposite of you on this the, to me that felt like a tacked on motive cuz we're like yeah you're saying all this but you guys are a bunch of shrimp that have violently <laughs> taken over people and everything that that leads to that theme they did it all by using shorthand and, and piggy and piggybacking off the Breakfast Club, and even to the point of the Breakfast Club, it f- uses a famous quote from David Bowie from the song "Changes," and they have somebody sing "Changes" in here. I was like, "Wow, you guys are just really going for it." Where you're not, you're not doing the work at all. You're, you're like, they've done the work. We'll just take these pieces and c- copy paste them in here. Yeah, I disagree. Yeah, I, yeah. I, when it got to this, I was like, "Give me." A- break already she's saying she's treating these people like like trying to say that they're friends and i'm trying to help you but that's not what she's it's a lie it's a a lie it's a manipulation she's saying these things just to say them so it's like (laughs) yeah exactly so it's not like she's actually it's not like the real motive you know she believes it right but just even her saying i was like this is so hollow at this point i even her trying to use this as as a technique i was like yeah you, you can't think anybody's phone. I think this. at this point, I don't know why you would even try to do it. <laughs> you literally yeah, became yeah. a monster abomination. Yeah. Yeah. And you oh, bored one of my friends. So, no thanks. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. No, I, that that whole thing with that, that's silly. But, yeah, I didn't. Again, you know, agree or disagree. Yeah. I, I feel like she's but, just stating the obvious. The thing is about that scene, it's like I already got that in the movie. Like, what this is about, it's a critique on being in high school. It's a critique on the failures of the American education education system. It was the, the, just the failures that, that – the this, the education system is with the teachers, and they have to conform sure, to sure. it too. Yeah, and it, yeah. it just felt like it was redundant, and it was just like, ah, let's just say it in case no one, all the dummies in the audience didn't get it. That's what it felt like to me. So, but then again, like I said, it depends on your taste. Yeah, you know, uh, different tastes for different people, which I respect. Might not agree, but I de- I definitely respect that. Uh, yeah, I actually, and it's funny because I really like this scene a lot. <laughs> you know, so so yeah, you know, I'm. Uh, it's too bad. Yeah. You know, yeah, know. but hey, but I know. Hey. I know. Yeah. But yeah, you know, no to each their own. <laughs> exactly. To each their own. I can't help everybody. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh, here we go. No, I'm kidding. Of course, of course I'm kidding. I'm 100% kidding. I was expecting you to go like, you know, you could go ahead and leave now. No, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, one more comment. <laughs> there was the ending. I don't know, man. The ending is kind of, it's kind of silly. You know, it's what she turns into a giant creature. You know, oh, that was in that, that. Now I would tell you this because the ending Audrey has this whole too. thing. I don't like. I really don't like that trope. And there's, you know, it's. It, it, uh, there's a lot of movies I don't like that do this. This is one of them. I really hate when they have the simple solution to make everything. You know, the alien species a hive mind. Because mm-hmm. that yep. means yep. when easy get when, out. Yep. When you kill the queen or you kill the head. Yeah. You kill whatever the, kid, the head. Alien in charge, or whatever. You know. <laughs> no, I, I think of that too. <laughs> yeah. 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 If you kill the a, the HNIC, then everything will go back to normal. It's one thing. It's one thing to where okay, if you kill this, everything shuts down. Like in the Star Wars, in the Phantom Menace. Oh, we kill this and all the robots will fall. Or in the yeah, Avengers, yeah. we kill this and then all the aliens will drop out of the sky. But it's a completely, it's a it's a whole new level. If well, if we kill this one thing, 
then everything goes back to normal. Yeah, everything everything goes, goes dry. Yeah, yeah I just assume. See, I didn't even like that in Avengers, and I love Avengers. When right, right. Still yeah, thing. but yeah, even in Avengers, when I rewatch it, that's the one thing I go like, yeah. Mm. yeah, that's the one thing I don't like, man. And you kill one thing, and all because it's just a way to have a convenient ending. Yep. Yeah, wrap it up. Yep, wrap it up. Get going. Everything's very tidy at the end. Mm-hmm. We just killed one alien, and all the others just dry the hell up. The ones who get taken over, do they just die? No, they they don't. They they would become human again. And see, I hate that Based shit. Where, yeah, 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 where they just figure that out in five minutes. Mm-hmm. All the, all, you know, no research, no no study. Just hey, it's a hunch. It's a hey, you know what? I read a book. I yeah. could be okay with it if more people would challenge it. And yeah, man, you know this whole thing with <laughs> these oh, effects. Jesus. Look, I, I'm not being nitpicky about some of these effects. I'll be nitpicky. I, 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 I can take I'll, some. I'll, of them. I'll pick those those nits. <laughs> well, I'll pick those nits when they look stupid as. Yep. Like I said about that octopus head, that looked fake as shit, man. Okay, it was kind of, it was meant to be funny at that moment. It was just, okay, it was sure. just a, it was just a visual. Sure. Okay, sure. so I, I'm fine. I can, I can let that go. But when your, your whole climax revolves around a goddamn alien turning into a, a, or a girl turning into an alien creature, man, those effects do not, they do no, not hold no. up. That shit looks terrible today. In motion. No fucking way. <laughs> 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 yeah, she out there doing the wave. Right. You know, she look like she like one of them uh, floating dudes. Oh yeah, those, oh, yeah, those new guys. Those dancing, those dancing tube dudes. And a, and a used car lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she look like she be selling used cars right now. <laughs> I don't think the creature looked bad. I mean, it's, well, it's a practical effect when it's a giant puppet. I was like, oh, this is fine. When it's a big CGI blob. <laughs> yeah, you know the. For it. So, you know, again, if you've seen the movie, if not, spoiler right here. What the hell are you still doing here? Then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but, a movie. But at the end, of course, like I said, Mary Beth just turns into a giant-ass creature. And, you know, I I didn't mind it. Like, the effect didn't look bad. It's just, you know, again, it's just kind of a generic monster design. Yeah. Kind of, yeah, they had, yeah. It's, yeah, you know, okay, I'll take it back. That shit looks like a video game, but. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they do have a puppet, though. They have a puppet version when Elisha uh, Wood confronts it. Yeah, yeah. Which no, I, I like the best, which I was like, you should have stuck with that instead of going. Because they do that thing, we're going to go back and forth between the puppet and the CGI. Mm-hmm. It's like, I know this is not the same thing. There's no consistency. Yeah. I don't like that. So. Yeah. Go well, it's the possible other. they built a puppet for that and it just didn't look good. Maybe. Yeah, my, yeah that's a good, good point. Yeah, I'm trying to find where that puppet is chasing him. Yeah, it's right at the end of the movie. Oh, it's, there, there, it's there like it is. Yeah, minutes. it doesn't look... Yeah, I, like the design, I just thought like, ah, there you go, just a generic alien creature. It doesn't look bad to me, though. Oh, here you go. <laughs> Shit, he's like a goddamn lion jumping through a, a burning hoop. Yeah. He's a gymnast. <laughs> that was some Spider Man mm-hmm. shit going yeah, on. Right there it is. Well, that's cool. They use practical effects right there. And, actually looks and I, cool. I like that. I mean, the design is yeah, it's derivative of the Queen Alien, if you will, from Aliens, yeah. but mm-hmm. at least it's real. Yeah. At least the actor can see it and have a reaction, like unlike you know they're looking all over the place where the CGI effect is. Yeah. So I bought this scene. One of the cool things that Kevin Williamson does in this movie that he did in Scream mm-hmm. is that he does give little hints, give you clues that this person might be the villain, the the killer, the alien. Uh, he gave you hints early on that Mary Beth might be the alien. I you know it, it's funny I hadn't seen this in so long I completely forgot it. But I knew right off the bat the whole time, like, yeah, it's her. I don't know mm-hmm. why y'all looking around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but for those who didn't, they have some clues in there, mm-hmm. like they did with uh, with, with Scream. I'm going to check it out. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's going alone. Right. Check it out alone. Like yeah, your boy Jamie Candy right. said in Scream, tell me that's not a killer. Yeah. <laughs> or, <laughs> tell me that's not an alien. <laughs> also, there's a line. There's a line here where she says, and yes. it might be, do you know the line I'm talking about? The lineage line. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, wow, thank you. He has a line where she says, and even early in the movie, I thought, oh, yeah, that's a strange way to put it. But yes. she's, she says, yeah, that's not in my lineage. And then it's like, all right, okay, yeah, she's, she's an alien. I don't know why you insist on being such a bad example for your people. What people? I'm not aware of any lesbianism in my lineage. Oh, that's too bad. You know, <laughs> she says, you should try. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, you know, I thought that that was pretty cool, especially when she's like, what What do you mean, what people? It's like, she's kind of still filling out what humans are. No, that's what she is. Even when she's like, I'm Mary Beth uh, uh, so-and-so, I come from Atlanta and in this specific county. It's like, that's a weird thing to say. That's, oh, yes. <laughs> that's something you expect from Mork from Mork. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Like an alien. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it's like, okay, yeah, she's, she's it. She's yeah. So, you know, I thought that that was pretty cool. You know, he did that with Scream and he did that here and I thought that, you know, it worked for me for the most part. Mm-hmm. Here, going back and watching, I thought, all right, cool. Put a little hints in there. Uh, I wonder if you could bring up some of the other weird aspects of this film that feel just dated or you can't do anymore. Like oh, well, you know what? You probably have one of them. Well, one there's a there's a there's a couple here. Yes. First of all, is that whole lesbian thing? And keep in mind, this is the '90s, y'all. Yeah. yeah. So there was that whole thing about lesbians still being weird, even if you were on their side. It was a still it's still a little weird social pariah, you know. Yeah. Very it, much. It's still weird to have somebody, even if even a mean girl or a bully, just in somebody's face over it. They clearly, to me, don't understand what drag is. No. Do you know what I'm saying? There's a scene where she's like, "I'm in drag." This is all your fault. What do you mean? Do you think I'm in drag for the aesthetics? You've it's worked. like, that ain't, yeah. that ain't drag. You, you had your hair up yeah. and you wear glasses. Superman glasses, that's, that's <laughs> it. And Clark Kent's on. <laughs> and, yeah. and all of a sudden, that's alien. drag. She's an alien, though. That's the thing. And then, yeah. There yeah. You go. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Mm-hmm. Rewatching it now, I don't like it like I did back then. I don't, I don't feel like it, it holds up so much. Especially, I think a lot of things of what ma- is making me not like it so much is us having revisited Scream so recently, mm-hmm. which is superior in so many ways. Like so yeah. much of what this is trying to do, Scream accomplished in ways that, uh, that, that are kind of amazing to look back and go like, wow, you guys were pulling some things in here that I couldn't even catch before. Whereas this is, well, I I get the intention and the meta ness and the way the way it's it's being smarter than just the B movie that it looks like, but it's not as smart as it thinks it is. I I was I was okay with it watching it at first, but there came a point about halfway where I realized like, yeah, I'm just not interested in it anymore. It's just not doing anything that I I think is uh is holding me to it and and being compelling. And yeah, I just I just don't dig it that much. Yeah, yeah. what would you rate it? Oh, it would be a rental for sure. I mean, you have some some good performances, mm-hmm. uh, but no, no, like I guess that's the thing. I I never really felt like a lot of the chemistry between the actors. It always felt a little superficial. It's like mm-hmm. I see what you're trying to do. You're 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 going back to like that Breakfast Club, but I feel like again that movie just did it better. All these past films did it better, and so it just kind of feels lesser to a degree. And I would have been interested to see if this was in the hands of a of a more accomplished sci-fi or horror director like mm. thanks really for scream we had wes craven mm. i'm sorry i think the the biggest faults of this movie f- kind of fall on robert Rodriguez and his direction and his and his editing and it just really it bothers me so yeah i would I'm, i guess i give like a high rental slightly more than you i go in knowing that this is this does not compare at all to those movies yeah. it's no thing it's definitely no it's definitely no scream even though it's from the same writer yeah. It's not even Invasion of the Body Snatchers. But again, if I can accept that it's not as good as those things, I don't even think this movie's trying to be better than those things. I pick what I liked in here, and a lot of this was fortunately very fun for me. Mm. And that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to have fun with this. And a lot of it was f- also funny. I think a lot of the jokes hold up. One of the things I disagree with you on is that I do think that the cast did have some chemistry. Mm. Not to a great extent, mm. but to the point where... They had enough chemistry to wear certain lines that were, po- were supposed to be comedic. They were effective. You know, again, where I'm supposed to actually feel for these characters at the moment, I'm supposed to feel for them because they did make me laugh. I did care for them. Again, I'll go back to saying that I think this showed a lot of great moments of Robert Rodriguez's directions that we don't, our direction that we don't see in a lot of his movies. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of his movies is just, again, he just, it's almost like he is, and there's nothing wrong with this. A lot of the movies he, he, he direct he directs those films like a giddy boy or yeah. you know some kid or something, which is fine. A lot of people love that. This one felt like somebody buckled down and directed a movie. Again, understanding people who look at this, especially if you love the thing as much as you do. You know, again, you saw Scream recently. You really like that. I get people saying, man, I just can't watch this without making those comparisons. That's t- completely understandable. But for me, uh, I enjoyed it enough to give it a matinee. I had a, like I said, in, in, the, in the end, I have to say, did I enjoy this more than I, than not? And uh, nah, I enjoyed this a lot. You know, I guess I put myself in that camp of people who are kind of like the cult people behind this, because I think a majority of people feel like you guys. Yeah. So I kind of yeah. resigned myself to being like, hey, 
that cult. Can I join? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I had a lot of fun with this. Yeah. Hey, everyone, support our Patreon, which helps us to continue bringing you our live streams, videos, and podcasts while bringing you new content such as exclusive live streams and animated shorts. Hey, everyone, the Double Toasted Live Tour is coming to an end with our final show in Dallas, Texas, February 18th at Viva's Lounge. I'm trying to get an after-party spot for all you VIPs and super VIPs, so get your tickets now by going to x1entertainment.com, and I'll see you soon. 